What's going on guys? This is Vince with vshred.com and today I'm going to be showing you guys five rear delt exercises that you can do using just a pair of dumbbells and a bench. All right. So I'm gonna show you guys five different exercises that you can do that are really good for your rear delts. I use um, a couple, you don't have to do necessarily all of these in the same workout. You can do just two, maybe three, or maybe even four of these if you're just trying to hit your rear delts. You don't really need to ever do more than three or four exercises if you're targeting a muscle as small as your posterior head of your deltoid. But when it comes to your rear delt, you have to understand exactly what movement pattern is going to be working it. You have three heads of your deltoid. You have your anterior, which is the front. You have your medial, which is the side. And then you have your posterior, which is the rear delt. And so the rear delt is what we're going to be targeting. It's this one running right back here. Um, it, it originates back in the, um, the spine of your scapula is what it's called, which is right back here. And then it's going to run down and it's going to insert into the deltoid, it's called the deltoid tuberosity of your humerus, which is just your upper arm bone. So it's going to be, so the fibers are gonna be running from here, here. So this is, this is where it's running. So in order to work a muscle, you have to understand that you need to shorten and lengthen the muscle. And so to get that peak contraction, it has to be shortened all the way. And to get the um, stretch of the muscle, it has to be stretched all the way down. So in order to work your rear delt, you have to make sure that you are bringing your arms out to the side. So this is going to be the main motion. But uh, the thing is, most people think that their arms, ha their, their hands have to come all the way out. Working your rear delt has nothing to do with what's in your hand or even just your forearm. It has everything to do with your upper arm, your elbow, and where your elbow is related to your shoulder. And so really, you could have, you could just have your arm cut off right here. And if your arm is coming out to the side, it's this moment right here, this movement right here, which is going to work that muscle. Doesn't matter if my arm is straight or bent. The only thing that uh, elbow flexion is going to work is going to be your triceps or your biceps. So the only thing that you need to focus on here is your elbow coming out and your elbow coming back in. So uh, I wanna show you five quick exercises that you can do. Uh, just takes a pair of dumbbells. First one is just going to be a regular standing bent over reverse fly with a pair of dumbbells. What that is, is basically just grab a pair of dumbbells and you see, probably see guys doing this all the time at the gym, bent over like this and they're bringing this weight out just like that. Now, there's a couple issues here when I see guys doing rear delt flies like this and the main one is they're not isolating their rear delt. So, like I said, to work your rear delt, you need to be shortening and lengthening this muscle, bringing your humerus back as much as you can and shortening that as much as possible. When people are doing rear delt flies, and I've talked about this before, they end up probably going too heavy. So that's another tip is that you wanna make sure that you're starting light on this so that you can perfect your form first and then build weight on top of that. But a lot of times guys or girls go too heavy and they end up, you see them going like this and they think that this is correct form because they're getting the weight from here to here and they're not really worrying about what they're doing in between. Whereas if you take a closer look into this form right here, you can see that sure, I'm probably working my post, my, my rear delt a little bit right there, but then because it's so heavy, when I get up to the top, I'm going to be shrugging my shoulders up and that is going to be trap engagement. So now you've basically turned this into a little bit of a compound movement by working two different muscles rather than trying to isolate your posterior delt as much as possible. So what you wanna do instead is first off, limit your range of motion a little bit. Now, what that means is instead of bringing this weight from here all the way up to the top and thinking that you have to bring this weight above shoulder height, you don't have to do that. And what you wanna do is roll your shoulders forward, over exaggerate rolling these forward, protract your scapula. From here, you want to focus as if you're not bringing this weight up, you're bringing this weight outward. Like I said, in order to shorten that muscle, you wanna bring this as close as you can back here. So you're not focusing on lifting it up because lifting it up is just gonna shrug that shoulder up and work that trap right there. You want to actually bring this weight outward and an outward foot pushing it literally to the side and then naturally because of the angle and the leverage of your arms, it's going to be brought up as well. But you wanna focus on pushing that weight outward while rolling your shoulders forward. And when this happens, you're going to find that you get a better squeeze on that rear delt and also you're not gonna be able to bring your arms up as high. So it's going to be pushed down 
you're gonna bring it outward and then your peak contraction is going to be with your arms almost almost level to the ground if not a little angled down towards the ground you're never gonna have to actually bring your arms all the way up here because this is just trap right here you want to roll your shoulders forward push the weight outward and then that's going to be your peak contraction right there bring it back down and then right before you lose um, you lose your contraction at the bottom you lose the tension you want to go right back into it so instead of starting here pressing it all the way up and getting a lot of trap engagement losing your tension here trap engagement losing tension you want to roll your shoulders forward press that out and then when you come back down stop right there so this is going to be a bent over dumbbell fly the next one is going to be a a sitting bent over dumbbell fly, reverse dumbbell fly and the main difference you might be thinking well you were just bent over it's going to be doing the same thing yes well when you're standing a lot of times like i said when people go too heavy they end up getting this the, that bounce in their knee and so they end up creating momentum with their legs sitting completely cancels out that bounce in your legs so you want to implement all of the things i just taught all the things i just talked about where you roll your shoulders forward you press this weight outward you go just just before you hit parallel to the ground that's going to be your peak contraction and you should be able to feel that you're going to go back down and then right before you hit straight with your arms and lose tension you stop and you go back into your next one now when you're bent over like i said when you're standing you can create that bounce with your knees and you still kind of can with your lower back and go like this and you see guys doing it all the time so instead of doing that keep your i like to try to keep my 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 stomach pressed against my thighs so instead of like starting here and you, and your shoulders raising up and creating that momentum like that you want to keep your stomach pressed against your thighs from here press this weight outward back down before you lose tension go into the next set or next rep so it's going to look just like this rolling your shoulders forward pressing the weight outward just like that and people always ask well do you have to have your hands neutral do you have to have your hands um pronated which is when they're turned down supinated with them turned out and really it's just going to be whatever you feel the best contraction I wouldn't say necessarily neutral works best for everybody. I wouldn't say pronated works best for everybody. I think it's going to be whatever you feel the best contraction, whatever helps you create the best mind muscle connection. Go with that and then every now and then you can switch it up to see if something is working better for you or making you sore the next day better than another way to hold the weight. So just test out different ways of holding the weight and see what works best. Um, so that's gonna be the second one. The next one is going to be pretty much the same thing, but we're going to be doing it uh, unilaterally, which means you're just gonna be doing one at a time. Um, and you can do these alternating if you want, where you're just kind of holding it down here and you're going up like that, and you're going alternating. This is gonna be the same thing. You wanna make sure that you are not using your trap at all. You want to press your shoulders down as much as humanly possible press them down and then from there you really want to focus on almost as if there's like a fence over here and you're trying to reach your arm under the fence and that's really the movement that you should be thinking about when you are doing this so instead of bringing this weight up like that you can see i'm working a lot of my trap right there you want to imagine that fence trying to press it under that fence keeping your shoulder rolled forward and that right there is working my rear delt so you can do these single arm that way you're hitting both you're targeting both of your rear delts evenly and when you're doing both you're not focusing on maybe creating momentum with one side and the other side you're really getting good form making sure that you are um, initiating or implementing proper form with both sides of your shoulder or both sides of your body that way you're not creating an, um, a body that's not symmetrical i guess um, so that's going to be the third one now the fourth one is going to be using the incline bent this one is going to be another uh, reverse fly, but it's going to be with my chest against this bench. So before I get into it As always, it's going to be the same type of thing no matter no matter where you are if you're standing sitting laying on a bench with cables How you work a muscle is never really going to change as far as the the positioning that you are with your body with your muscles, with your joints, what you're focusing on, protracting your scapula, pressing the weight outward. So none of that is going to change. And this is going to make sure that you create, you cancel out any kind of momentum. You can't create it with your legs. You can't create it by bouncing your shoulders with your upper, with your lower back. 
So this is going to be probably the most strict type of form that you're going to have if you're doing any of these uh, reverse fly variations. So you want to get up your chest on this bench, roll your shoulders forward. Again, imagine there's a fence that you're trying to go under, press that weight outward as much as you can, focusing on uh, squeezing that rear delt outward, squeezing back down to the bottom. And before you bring this weight together right here, I'm just resting. I'm just holding this weight with my arms straight. I'm just basically going to work my forearms a little bit. You want to stop right there because right there, I'm all of a sudden working that rear delt again. So there, press the weight out, back down, keeping your shoulders rolled forward. And this is going to be the incline bench reverse dumbbell fly. So that's going to be the fourth one. The fifth one is also going to be right here. And this is going to be a dumbbell face pull. And you guys have probably seen face pulls on um, cables. It's just when you're basically, like you could be sitting down on something, you got the cable and you're pulling it in towards your face like that. Typically you're pulling down. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody teach it like I'm about to show you guys, which is, here you go. Um, but you wanna get on this incline bench the same way you were before. And then from here, you want to basically imagine that you are trying to pull this weight up towards your forehead. But remember, you're trying to work your rear delts. You're not working, so when you bring this weight up here, you're, it's going to be a, what is called a polyarticulate exercise, meaning you are moving two joints. So you're gonna be moving your shoulder joint and you're also gonna be moving your elbow joint. So what you really wanna focus on is getting that mind muscle connection in your rear delt and that is by making sure you have more abduction than you do um, elbow flexion. So, you want to hear, basically when you're pulling this weight up, you really don't want to kind of just curl this up because you could very easily just bring this up to your forehead and you could look like this and I'm just kind of getting a little bit of like bicep work here. Instead, what you want to do is drive this weight up through your elbows. You want to bring this, like imagine as if you are pulling the elbow, imagine your hands are just glued to these dumbbells and you're pulling your elbows up to the sky. And, and also keeping it in line with your forehead. Instead of bringing this up, you wanna pull through your elbows and get your elbows in the same line as your forehead right there. And then as I said, we're shortening and lengthening that rear delt. So the whole emphasis here is to drive this elbow backwards to get that driving back towards your scapula. So this is going to look like this. So you're gonna have these dumbbells, you're gonna drive your elbows up just like that. It's not gonna be a huge movement, driving it up and again keeping your shoulders rolled forward elbows out and up just like that and again I could probably drop weight here but I didn't bring other dumbbells here right now so start light on these get the form down drive those elbows up back you can see my rear delt being worked and that's going to be the fifth exercise so if you guys are struggling with help with developing your rear delts and maybe you're lacking exercises or maybe Let's say you knew all these exercises, but you maybe didn't know proper form or you thought you knew proper form, and I just pointed out multiple things that you were doing wrong. Make sure you're fixing those the next time that you're going to hit your rear delts, and I guarantee you feel a better contraction in your rear delts and they start developing better than what they were before. Now, if you learned anything in this video, please make sure you're clicking that thumbs up video. It doesn't go unappreciated. I really do uh, thank you for those guys, who, those guys and girls who click that thumbs up. If you guys are wanting more tips and tricks in the gym and in the kitchen, what type of foods to be eating, what type of workouts to be doing for your specific body type. I created a body type quiz that asks you a couple of questions that help me figure out what you should be doing in the gym and in the kitchen and then it spits out a video at the end where it gives you three tips and then it recommends, basically matches you up with the program that is right for your body type to help you achieve your goals faster, one that I've personally written. So if you wanna check out that quiz, uh, you can click it in the link in the description below this video. Other than that, if you guys have any questions about this video, any comments, videos that you guys want me to make, anything you're confused about, please leave it in the comment section below as well. I'm always checking those. And then last but not least, make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel. That way you're not missing out on future videos. All right, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.